Very nice. So people asked in the in the forum about the owner log system. Owner log is basically a browser extension, and uh, it will lock your browser. That's what the name is from. And then uh, it's also people will stare at you while you take exam, and they pause. Recently, it's a new thing. They pause the exam, and like I don't see your face. So you have to like, hey, this is me. This is not another person. And then they actually block your exam during the exam. So it's a new feature. ASU paid for it. It's not free and everything. So it's pretty serious, pretty serious. Um, and there's some old instructions uh, are posted in modules, but there's nothing special from you to do. You, you download Honor Log, you start exam. So make sure you log out web work from all other devices. We had a case when some emergency called and the person picked up the phone, but it was emergency. So we, it's not like it was cheating, but because web work was open on the phone, it kicked the person out from the exam. So it was a very unfortunate. So in general, put your phones away, everything, prepare everything, have water bottle and paper and make sure it's charged, computer is charged and everything is charged. And then you start, you log in, you might need your ID because it will ask a password or whatever. And after that, you just show your room. They will show you how to show it. Kind of, it's uh, always the same. So it's um, if you've done it before, you know. If you've done it before, have like 20 minutes ahead of time to make sure that you do that. First time, I think it's confusing. Show your room, and then you uh, start a test. And we don't give you the password. Owner lock knows the password. So owner lock plugs the password in for you. That's also the convenient part. And so then you start the exam and they, you know, they basically will be watching your face and there's no other people in the room. And sometimes they receive warnings. So there's also AI involved, which tells people who watch, hey, I think there's something there. So we have funny stories when there was like a picture of Madonna on the wall and they're like, there's another person in the room. So it's kind of interesting. And then the real person will check everything. Let's do it. Let's figure out uh, what we need for this test. Basically, lots of you substitution integration by parts. Technique of integration started with 5.5. Uh, 5.5, you substitution integration by parts, they go to final exam as well, and to calculus three. That's, those are very important things. For example, sometimes we will just ask you, so I'm following the university review for you to know number 13, uh, which I posted in modules, but it's also a web page. If you just search ASU MAT 266, there's some website shows up. This is where this review is from. Integ integral of sine ln x over x dx. Sometimes we're just gonna ask you A, B, C, D, E to choose what is the substitution, what's the correct substitution. You should be ln x, you should be sine x, you should be sine and x, you should be x, you should be one over x, question mark. You know, you can imagine A, B, C, D, E, none of the above, there is always that. So this is the intuition of how I explain what your substitution is. Actually, if you watched my videos on YouTube, you know that I'm explaining in my own way and I think students like it. The idea is whatever you feel like is too complicated, that's usually what U is. U substitution was designed to make a function easier. So I'm fine with a log and I'm fine with sine and I'm fine with X, then what should be U sub? Well, I'm not fine with sine of log. Sine of log is hard. I cannot choose the whole thing to be U. That will be too much. Then the U will be complicated and it will not actually work out. The idea is to make sign easier and to make sign easier i will choose whatever is inside of sign to be you so now it's going to be sign of you that is the idea sign of you so the correct answer is a like so then uh in general whatever is inside of some function usually is the choice moreover let me uh, remind you that u substitution undoes chain rule so if there's a function inside of the function, usually this is when your substitution will be used. But I like Russian dolls. Mm, I always teach it through Russian dolls. Again, if you see my videos, you'll see there. Whatever is function inside usually is you. 
That's the main idea. And now actually let's solve this integral. Uh, you don't have to follow my notation, but it's pretty international notation. So I teach it all the time. I like it. Let u be ln x. Also, let me know if my handwriting is bad. Then du is one over x dx. And then depends on how book teaches you. I teach it this way. Uh, we solve for whatever we need. So I need dx over x. So I'm looking for dx over x. In this case, it's du, but sometimes you have to solve for it, right? So one, one let me see, one over x dx can be written as dx over x, and this is du. So solve for whatever we need. Plug equation number one in equation number three in u substitution over here into the integral. Integral becomes sine of u, that's planned, that's what we wanted. And then the yellow part is dx over x, but that is now du. So integral became sine of u du. Integrate, integral of sine is cosine or minus cosine. I don't remember, I'll write down cosine and then decide after that. Cosine u plus c, right? And then I will ask myself, derivative of cosine is minus sine, but we have plus sine. So to fix that, I will plug minus. So I never remember both integration and differentiation. Just remember one of it. I remember derivative sine, derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is minus sine. So I always check at the end. When I differentiate cosine, it should be minus sine, but I don't have minus sine, so I put minus sine. Then that is not the answer. Nobody except you knows that what u is. You have to go back. Unless it's definite integral when you don't go back. You go back to the previous notation. u is ln x. Because again, uh, using u substitution was just an intermediate step. It was a technique. Nobody wants to know how did you solve it. Uh, so the answer should include x ln x plus c. Did I make a mistake? Please check. Uh, sometimes I make mistakes on purpose to see that you're paying attention. So can you do it on a test? Either I, we are gonna ask you to uh, A, B, C, D, do you just choose and move on? Or where's my chat? Or you actually solve it. Ah, oh, I found a chat. So, uh, Oh, the driver license questions spoke out in the chat. So ACU requires that you post, uh, I actually make an announcement about it today. ACU requires the requirement of the online classes so that you upload your ID into the system. Uh, that's a must do. As exception, we, I allow personally for the first exam to use your driver license, or if you lost that, which we had the case, then the passport, that is fine. But you should have ACU ID uploaded. Uh, they don't like if you don't do that. And then ACU sometimes uh, complains about us that we did not push it hard enough. So please do that. So I don't receive complaints that I did not push it. OK, questions about you substitution? No? Uh, well, that's not the only example. So let's do more examples. And we're going to do integration by parts after that. So. Something like this. Sometimes it's going to be, let's do a different integral. Yeah, practice that too. How about a different integral? <laughs> Example two integral from. one to five, yeah. and then that's going to do three x cube square root of x to the four minus seven dx. Oh, yeah, looks nice. Again, can you first choose your substitution? And then if we actually ask you to actually integrate that. So A, B, C, D, e, blah, blah, blah. What do you think should be your substitution? 
This can be 3x squared. The whole square root. Eh, usually this whole square root is not used. Again, whatever you feel is too complicated. Usually function, sign of the function is the u. So I don't like square root of stuff. I know how to integrate square roots or differentiate square roots, but how do you integrate square roots with stuff in it? So that is where I want to choose you. Moreover, there's one more idea to point out here. U substitution works when doing, when doing chain rule, as I mentioned before. So U substitution works when one part of the integral looks like, not necessarily exactly the same, but looks like derivative of another part. So in the previous example, ln x, if you differentiate ln x, it will give you one over x. Thus, I saw this integral originally as sine x ln x times one over x dx. I just rewrote it, it's not different integral. Then I saw like, oh, if I choose ln x to be u, this whole piece is du. Derivative of ln x is one over x. That's gonna work out as sine u du. So the idea, one piece should look like derivative of another piece. Again here, if I choose u to be x to the four minus seven, then du of that is x cubed times some constant. So again, looks like, but not necessarily the same. But derivative of x to the four minus seven is x cubed times something. So that's why I know it's going to work. One part of the integral looks like derivative of another part of the integral. Let u be x to the four minus seven. Then du will be four x cubed dx. And again, like I told you before, I want to solve for things we want. I want x cubed dx. First of all, I cook. I could, and I usually do, kick out this three outside. So if that's easier for you, do it right away. Uh, at some point, you'll be so good at your substitution, I promise you, you will be good at this, no matter you like it or not. You will be good at this. The more you do it, the better you become at this. I'm good at your substitution, not because I'm super amazing mathematician, just because I did it so many times. Uh, you will be as good as me in a month or at the end of the class, sooner or later, it's inevitable. Look at that. So now I see I need, if I already decided that inside this thing will be u, then what is missing? So now I have squared of u, I need to change x cubed dx. So I will solve for x cubed dx from the second equation. That is the idea. From the second equation, x cubed dx is one quarter du. Plugging in equation number one and equation number two in the integral and hope for the best. It is a definite integral, so there's something more gonna happen right now, but let's do it in a second. Three is in front, so let's keep it there. Integral, let's keep one and five x cubed dx became one quarter du, square root of u, one quarter du. Does this make sense? Let me put it in yellow. One quarter du, that was, uh, actually it's not gonna do that. One quarter du came from x cubed dx. Now, this is a definite integral. So you have two ways of solving it. Either you first solve it as an indefinite integral, like we did before. Count, go back to the accentation and then plug five and one or whatever they teach in the book, just classical way is to change limits of integration. You have to change, change A and B. I will tell you in a second why. We are working now with the integral of U. So you cannot plug one and five here because one is X. And five is X, there's a different unit. If X represent number of grandmothers going to the lofts in the morning and U represents the money they spend there, then that's not the same thing. You cannot plug one into another one. Everything has to be consistent. If the whole integral is in, in terms of U, limits of integration have to be in terms of U. Don't mess up units. You cannot plug $5 into how many grandmothers came uh, into the store in the morning. That's kind of what I usually say as example. 
So we cannot put one and five. This is how you do it. When X, when X was one, U becomes, well, U is X to the four minus seven, right? So it's gonna be one to the four minus seven, which is minus six. Now I, don't, I realize I don't know what's gonna be, <laughs> I have to calculate. When X was five, U becomes again, x to, to the four minus seven, that's the same as before. Five to the four minus seven, and I don't know what it is. You can calculate for me. For now, I just keep it as it is. Minus six and that. So this is continuation of the u substitution box. The short notation, which many people like at some point, is this one, I'll put it in blue. One became minus six, five became, Five to the four minus seven. Did anyone calculate what it is? Six eighteen. Thank you. That's very handy. Six eighteen. Did someone calculate? So I will put it here. One was at the bottom, so it's now at minus six. Five was at the top, but now it is six eighteen. Don't be bothered if it's from my, if the A is lower than B at some point, if A is bigger than B, sometimes you'll have from 10 to zero. Doesn't matter, trust the calculations, trust the calculations. So in this case, A and B are in order, but sometimes A can be bigger than B, whatever, just keep it like that. Now, if you change limits of integration, you don't go back to the original variable. Do not go back to X. Why would you do that? You, you just calculate A and B for you. So you're gonna plug them. So you don't have to go back. If you did not change, then you have to go back. And now we're gonna finish integration. So I have three and then one quarter, I will kick it out as well. I always do that because I can. Minus six and six, one, eight. U to the one half. That's the square root of u, du. And I need to remember power rule. Power rule says it will be u, one half plus one over one half plus one. So three halves divided by three halves. Right. Um, checking something. Oh, yes. Yeah, Bar minus six, six, 18. This is the moment. This is the moment when you should not make a mistake. We don't go back to X because, let me check, this is U, this is U, 618, and this is U minus six, matches. If those numbers don't match, then you have to make them match, which means to go back to the original variable. But now I just plug top minus the bottom, three quarters multiplied by two thirds, and then plug the top 618 raised to the three halves minus, minus six raised to the three halves, which is bad because then it doesn't exist. Negative number in the square root, minus six cube will be still negative and then you take square root. So that means actually we, we will be teaching right after the exam about improper integrals, that this integral doesn't exist at one. So I should move it to two, then it should be fine, whatever. Two, two actually is not good either. Uh, I should have moved it to like seven, basically. Yeah, that's fine. This is the final answer. This is the final answer. Good example when I should not create examples on the floor. Use example from the book because they don't those little things. Mm. Yes, you're supposed to submit your work. Uh, you're supposed to submit your work after you take the test. There is a special place there. I already posted it. It says upload the file. What did you do with the X cube? Let me find it and explain. X cube. So if, that's a good question. Where, where did it go, right? If everything inside of the square root X to the four minus seven is U, then DU, is 4x cubed dx. Now I want to plug it here. We have x cubed dx. 
So x cubed dx is solving for it, one over four du. So whatever that thing in yellow became one over four du, here it is. So x cubed dx became one over four du. Let me know if that makes sense. That's the tricky part. That's actually where people get lost, usually on exactly this question. That's a good question. Makes sense. Okay, I'm glad. Other questions, uh, blah, 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 looking good. Okay, very good. Now, more. Let's see. Using a substitution, how about trigonometric functions? Trigonometric functions. I should actually just go and let's see, MAT to 66. If you search for ACU MAT to 66, the first website shows up. This is where we have all the exam reviews. That one has very good problems. And I actually spent six hours writing down all of the solutions for all of these problems. So now they are all solved. You will see that. I posted it to modules too, but I have all the solutions. That was a crazy amount of work. But students really liked it. So it's good. How about something like this? Cosine and sine. These type of questions also, many of them are from your homework. Okay. So, example. Integral. And then you have hmm, sine x dx and then five minus cosine cube x. Yeah, that looks crazy. What do you think we should do? So first of all, this integral might not necessarily be done with your substitution. There are many different techniques, but this is how I know if that's your substitution. If one of the functions looks like derivative of another. Sine and cosine, they create each other. Derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is minus sine, but doesn't matter, sine and cosine, they alternate. So when I choose one to be u, another one becomes du. And that's how it gives me a hint that probably that's u substitution. Now I just need to choose what to choose to be u. So should I choose sine x to be u? Sine x, should I choose uh, cosine cube. Should I choose five minus cosine cube? Should I choose one over five? I don't want to write this down. Should I choose just cosine? Like which one? This is how you check. First of all, you can try all of them and see if it works. If you stuck, probably it's not good. But second of all, this is how you know. If you choose something U, will the DU show up in front of you? So if I choose u to be sine, du will be cosine. But then du ends up to be in the denominator and cubed. That is not good. Du probably should not be cubed. So we should not do that. Cosine cubed to be u. Then derivative of cosine cube, uh, cube is chain rule. Probably that's not going to work either. It's going to be three cosine square. We don't have cosine square. So I don't like the first one. I don't like the second one. If I choose denominator to be u, that will be one over u, which is kind of awesome. But then the derivative of it will be minus three cosine square sine times plus. I don't have that. So I don't like that either. Let's check one over, let's check just cosine. If u is cosine, then du, guess what, is minus sine. And I see it in front of me. It's over here, plus or minus. So. That's how I know it's a good choice. Let's check. If u is cosine, so let u be cosine, du will be minus sine x. I need sine x dx. So I will solve for sine x dx. Then from here, then sine x dx is minus du. 
plug the last equation and the first equation into the integral. Let's see what's going to happen. So I chose cosine to be u. It's going to be 5 minus u cube. So cosine is u, right? Let me point this out. This piece is u. It also makes sense because we like to plug, we like to choose u to be something inside, and cosine is cubed. So cosine is inside of the cubic function. Cosine is like parentheses cubed, like so. So now I have nice u cubed, which is good. Now, derivative of that is minus sine. We've solved for minus sine. So sine x dx is a perfect minus du, minus du. Well, nobody write down it's minus in the numerator. So either you put minus one or you put minus du at the top, which is also not very nice. People usually put minus one. The integral becomes, you can put minus outside, du over five minus u cubed, like so. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. And how you solve that, that's a different question uh, with different techniques, integration of uh, trigonometric functions and stuff. But if at least just to choose A, B, C, D, then this is good. This is good enough. Now, let's see. How about exponential functions? Let's so I did log, yes. So, you know, I did log, I did polynomials, I did trigonometric functions. How about exponential? It's the only one left, basically. We did not do the substitution. With the exponential functions. Something like this. There's lots of classical examples on exponential functions. Like e, this one is good. Integral e to the x, six e to the x plus two dx. Like so, look at that. Again, what you're gonna be choose to be choose choosing u. Well, derivative of u will be still e to the x, e to the x, and e to the x. Then maybe it's nice if I choose this u, this e to the x to be u. Then derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this whole thing will be du. That is the correct answer. Let u be e to the x. Then du is e to the x dx. And you are done after that. The integral becomes 6u plus 2. And e to the x dx is a perfect du, du over 6u plus 2. If you just were asked to choose, that's the choice. You did good. Good job. If not, then you actually have to finish that. So let's do that. Let's finish. Um, after this, you're integrating. this fraction, and then the fraction will give you a logarithmic function. Uh, if you don't see it yet, let's perform second u substitution. So by the way, that's very important to point out, u substitution is not called u substitution internationally. People just call it substitution. Substitution. So anything can be a substitution. And the letter here is very random. People just like you for some reason, it's in English, just stick to it. People stick to you, but who knows who chose you at first place? You sub is short notation for the proper name, substitution. So it can be T substitution, W substitution, whatever. And that's gonna what we're going to do right now. I want to perform one more substitution. I will choose this whole thing, 6U plus 2. Yes? 6U plus 2 to be U, but we already used U, so let's use another variable. People usually do W or even U1. That's also nice, but let's do something else. Let's do W. This is second U, right? Double U. Let's see why I did that. Let's double U is six U plus two. Then DW, derivative of W is six times derivative of U, that is DU. Why did I do that? 
because let's see what I need. I need just du or specifically one du. So let's solve for du. du will be one over six dw, divide by six basically, divide by six. So I'm plugging the first equation and the third equation into my integral. The integral becomes du is C in yellow, one over six dw. Usually I kick out one over six right away. And then the whole denominator becomes w. Stare at it for a second to see if you see how to integrate it. What do you think about that? One over six kicks out dw over w. Do you remember? Do you remember the integral of one over x dx? That's a special case. That's not a power rule. That's logarithmic function, absolute value x plus c. So check it out. We have logarithmic function here. Equals, and now see I'm going to go back twice to the original variable. One over six natural log of w, absolute value of w, plus c. Nobody knows what w is. We literally just made it up. So I'm going to go back in this color, purple. W is actually 6u plus 2. You're like, oh, okay. So 1 over 6, ln, absolute value, 6u plus 2 plus c. People are like, well, we don't know what u is. The, the equation started, this equation of the equation, the integral started with x. Why do you have so many new letters? You're like, yeah, that's true. It was just intermediate calculation. So what is your u? u was in blue. Okay. Blue. u is I'm going up, e to the x. So the answer is 1 over 6. ln, absolute value, 6 times, you put it in blue, e to the x plus 2 plus c. That is the final answer, like so. What do you think about the answer? Could you also just make uh, 6 e squared e to the x? Be u from the start and then pull one six. Let's check to be u. Yes, that is true. So the comment uh, there is a uh, very smart comment, comment is to just to make denominator to be u and all of this. Then derivative of this will be six e to the x dx which you just divide by six and so on, exactly. So that is also a very good way to do it. And I have a, even a better way to do it. No, actually your way probably is the best way to do it. And I want to do it this way in the purpose of the use substitution shortcut. So the common says, actually we could just choose all of it to be you right away. Then let's do that. And I'll show you what the shortcut can be here. Or, Let's just use u to be, let me go back to original, uh, six e to the x plus two, six e to the x plus two, then du will be six e to the x dx. We need e to the x dx because it's there standing alone in the numerator. Solve for that, e to the x dx is one six, du, plug the first equation and the last equation, the integral e to the x over six e to the x plus two dx becomes, the whole denominator is u, the numerator, the numerator is one six du, like so, du. So the integral becomes one over six du, you. This way is faster. To be honest, it's a long way because we were told to explain the difference between several U substitutions. U substitution, W substitution, L substitution. If you have to perform several, remember that is fine. It's not necessarily have to be a variable U. Then it is one over six DU over U, but DU over U gives me natural log of U. And we go back right away. It's gonna be one over six natural log 
of you, but if you want to save time, you plug you right away and it's going to be 6 e to the x plus 2 absolute value plus c. What do you think about that? Agree? The answer should be the same. As you can see, it is the same. So what I wanted to talk about is here. At this moment over here, you can actually have the answer right away. You, if you know your substitution shortcuts, you don't have to know your substitution shortcut. That is not a requirement. However, I have a very nice video on those and knowing your substitution shortcut speeds up uh, the process of your substitution. U sub, again, it's not necessary U sub, any kind of sub uh, in this chapter, substitution, integ integrational substitution. Uh, shortcuts. Shortcuts. You can watch the video or you can check it right now. And basically, there are not so many of them to memorize. If you have integral of e and then the linear function ax plus b, only work with linear, no squares, nothing, no signs and stuff. So not sine x, ax plus b. So then you copy divide by the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is a, divide by a. That is undoing chain rule. When you differentiate e to the ax plus b, you copy and multiply by a. So to undo it, we divide. And whatever I showed in this example, this is why I wanted to show it as well. Integral of one over ax plus b. So dividing by the linear will be natural log copy ax plus b divide by the leading coefficient. That's how to undo e and law and fraction with uh, easy log with linear part only fast. It is u substitution. If you choose this to be u, du will be a dx. So dx will be one over a. And this is how, how one over a shows up. But this is the thing, it's faster this way. It's still u substitution. We're just doing a shortcut. Sine and cosine, integral, integral of sine ax plus b dx. Again, only works with linear. So it's going to be cosine plus or minus, let's figure it out in a second, ax plus, AX plus b dividing by the leading coefficient plus c. And now you ask yourself, derivative of cosine is minus sine. Oh, so it should be minus. That's how you know. And cosine is the same thing, right? We know ax plus b. I don't know if it's plus or minus, so I'm going to write down sine ax plus b dividing by the leading coefficient plus c. Derivative of sine is plus cosine. Okay, so it should be plus. So dividing by the leading coefficient a. So if it's 5x, you divide by 5. If it's negative 7x plus million, you're dividing by negative 7. Finally, uh, Paul, um, power, that's the weird one, ax plus b to the n. n should not be min uh, minus 1, though, because we already dipped 1 over ax plus b. dx, that's a power of ax plus b n plus one over n plus one, that's power rule. Power rule. And then you divide by the leading coefficient. Plus C. Plus C. Those are my shortcuts. And again, I have video explaining it in more details, but actually this is good enough. Not required. But uh, your testing abilities will speed up. And if you plan to take calculus three, this is priceless. In calculus three, we will be doing use of so much and so fast. It's nice to be fast at that. Um, so on honor lock, uh, I think should be there already because ASU was supposed to give me honor lock and they didn't. And they requested on Friday and it was weekend. So they did not do it. So on Monday, they said they will finish it by 5 p.m. So I think it should be there by 5 p.m. But now I have to set it up. There's a question in the forum about, in the chat about that. So then after this uh, review, I will go and check and set up the practice exam for you. No worries about that. So that's your substitution. Integration by parts. 
took us kind of a while to finish just your substitution. But that's actually super important. Honestly, integration with streaks is not as important as your substitution. Let's do integration by parts. IBP. IBP is extremely important. Integration by parts. Very important. It goes to lots of sciences. If you plan to be in STEM, you will see it quite a lot. Integration by parts and thus product rule. Product rule. And because many behaviors in the real life applications are products of stuff, how fast the bacteria is moving. The speed of bacteria is multiplied by the size of the petri dish. That's how fast the bacteria is divided. That's a product. So to undo product rule, you use integration by parts. It's everywhere because of it. Speed times gravitational forces, everything. The comet is flying with gravitational forces times its speed. That's also integration by parts. Classical examples of integration by parts are these. 4x ln going 4x ln x dx. How do I know that's a classical example of integration by parts? Because I'm teaching it so often. <laughs> no, because integration by parts helps when you have two functions multiplied and they have no correlation between each other. So sine and cosine multiplied, usually yeah, that's your substitution. One over x and log, usually your substitution. Uh, we had polynomials, right? We had this guy. X to the four and X to the three. That's your substitution for sure. But if there are two functions that have no relationship between each other, that's if that's product of two functions and product of two functions should be integrated using integration by parts. Log and four X have nothing to do to each other. So that's how I know. Now, we would definitely watch my video about Lee Ate. That's actually must do to be successful in this class because not all books teach Li Ate. And I was so angry when I learned it. Not all books teaching this amazing, amazing memorization hint. It's not a hint how to choose you in integration by parts. I did not know this because my book did not teach me. And I was struggling so extra in integration by parts. And then I learned it when it was too late already. And I had wasted so much time before that. Li Ate tells you, Choose you, let me put it above. Li Ate, amazing, it's an amazing thing. So my video of special teaches it on purpose because it's very important. Choose you to be whatever first is in order. Choose you in order, whatever you see first. If you see log, yeah, that should be your you. You don't have to keep thinking anymore. So I see log. Yeah, that's my you. That's it. No, there's not so much thinking after that. It's not a theorem. It's a, just a hint. But yeah, it works. That hint works 99%. So why not to use it? I, those are inverse functions. Inverse functions uh, explaining. That's like arc sine, right? Arc sine x. If you see that, choose that to be you. A is algebra. Algebra. That is like x, like 4x, right? Or x squared plus 5. That's algebra. So 4x, I would choose that to be you, but log was first. So now I'm choosing log because of that. Log is the best option every time if you see log. T is trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions, for example, cosine x, tangent. Tangent x, right? And the last choice. The last is usually the worst is e to the x, a to the x, phi to the x. That's exponential function. It's just not good to choose e to the b to be u. That's why it's the last option. I'm putting this in the fat rainbow box because it's extremely important. Liate is such a good help. Like you don't need any cheat sheet if you have Liate. And it's very easy to remember. In general, if you see log, choose log to be u. And now let me show you how I do integration by parts. And again, if you already learned with differentiation, good for you. It just doesn't really matter. Integration by part is a technique. How you organize the information, that's your choice. It doesn't matter too much. I do it this way. And it's classical international way to do it also, just letting you know. Let u be ln x. Then du is 1 over x dx. 
That's left side of the table. The right side of the table is DV. DV doesn't have a choice. DV is the leftover. You only choose you. DV is whatever is staying there, waiting for you to be DV. So it is uh, DX, uh, 4X DX. And now you're integrating that. V will be 4X squared over 2. And you can simplify that. I would simplify right away. That is uh, 2X squared. And no plus C. I can tell you in a second why. And so just wait for a second. So left uh, side of the box, the first column, differentiating, right side of the box, uh, integrating, very nice. Visually, so the formula says integral of U dV, so we chose something to be U, everything else is dV, equals, uh, it's going to be U times V minus integral V dU. Yes, kind of we expect you to remember the formula, but I always teach the way that you should memorize the least amount of stuff because memorizing stuff is painful. So I like visual memorization. Visually, I remember cross product minus bottom product. U times V minus integral of V du. That is how I remember. Or you remember the formula, both again. Equal sign, equal sign. We're performing integration by parts. U times V is logarithm X times 4X squared, which is 2X squared. 2X squared minus integral 2X squared. So minus bottom product, but instead of the integral, times 1 over X dX. The whole goal of integration by parts is to break complicated integral into two parts. One part is a solved part. It's solved. We don't have to integrate that. And another part is hopefully, hopefully, is the easy integ integration by parts. That's the idea here. So the first part is good. Look at that. It's beautiful. We don't need to do anything else. But the second part, we hope it's easier. Well, if you simplify this, it is easier. It's just 2x. So I know how to integrate 2x. Yay, it worked. Integration by, part, by parts works. Ln x 2x squared minus integral of 2x dx. And the answer follows. Ln x 2x squared minus integral of 2x is 2x squared over 2 plus c cancels out. This is the answer. I do want to rewrite it. Why I did not put C in the box, like in the table, right? Because at the end, we have one fat important C. That's how you usually explain. That big C collects all the Cs on the way. So there is C over here, but we don't need it because at the end, it just submerges into the big C. That big C collects all the Cs on the way. So like, why bother? That is the idea. And in general, from the formula, you will have plus C over there and minus C over here. So it cancels out anyways. Uh, that's one way to explain. But in differential equation class, you will see we choose, we do this technique all the time. If there are lots of C's on the way, why bother? Just at the end, put big fat C because that C is a constant and constant just accumulated all the constants. Good. What do you think about that? Integration by parts, IBP. Usually students like IBP more in a use substitution because if you follow Liate, it's almost impossible to mess up. You just do Liate. But before saying that, I'm not saying it's easy, but some of students like it more. I heard it many times. But before saying that, let me show you integration by parts that have your substitution in the process is that. Then you tell me if it's hard or not hard. But I feel like if you just learned it, everything is hard if it's new. So that's also not very fair to compare like that. One more example for integration by parts. Example two, I guess. Integral 3x sine of 4x dx, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
So interesting, what should I do? I see that there's a 4x inside of sine x. So I would like this 4x to be u in the u substitution. But then from my other point of view, I see that 3x is multiplied by sine and 3x and sine have nothing to do to each other. So that's integration by part. And I'm gonna use layout there to choose what to be u. So what should I do first? Well, actually you choose what do you wanna do first? Sometimes your substitution is nicer to go first. I like to perform integration by parts first, and I'll show you later why. But that's not the rule. You just do it. Doesn't matter of the order here. Both are integrational techniques. So you can do first one and then the second one. Uh, it's just from the experience. I felt like integration by parts being done first make it better most of the time, except some examples when it made it hard. So I will do integration by parts first. 3x multiplied by sine functions, they don't give each other when you differentiate or integrate them. So that's integration by parts. And let's do it. The uh, here tells me, if I see log, choose log to be uh, u. Well, I don't see log. If I see inverse function, do I see arc cosine, arc tangent? No. Then algebra and trig, I see both. Algebra and trig. Algebra is 3x. Trick is sine. Well, whatever goes first in the Li Ate. Algebra goes first. So go ahead. Then this will be a good choice for the U. That's how I choose it. U is 3x. Everything else will be dv. Does it make sense? How like make a choice? Just, yeah, just type your questions and I will be checking. Let's do it. If U is 3x du is 3dx box. Uh, I'm going fast because I don't want this video to be too long when you'll be rewatching it. Uh, so you can always slow down or pause. 4x dx. This is my dv. dv is everything else. You don't choose that. Now, I want to integrate this function. And now I see your substitution, duh, or just substitution, right? So now I have to choose this 4x to be u, your one, w, whatever you want. Or use a shortcut. And I just told you the shortcuts. The shortcuts are here. Here they are. So you see, I color coded. Two of them are log and e. Two of them are sine and cosine. And one is power. So let's do it. Uh, integral of sine is plus or minus cosine. Copy 4x, divide by the leading coefficient. And now check, derivative of cosine is minus sine. So minus. See how consistent I am. I like it. Good. Cross, bottom, product. Cross, minus, bottom. Integration by parts, equal sign, equal sign. 3x, that's u, times v minus cosine 4x over 4, that's v, minus integral of bottom product, v and du, v and du. So it's going to be um, repeat. But basically, this v shows up twice. You just copy it right away, but this time in time inside of the integral times 3dx. And now you integrate by parts. So the first part is prepared to be done. The second part, hopefully, is an easy integral. Maybe it's not. Well, let's see. The first piece is done uh, 3x minus cosine 4x over 4. Oh, no, that's not correct. 4x is the input over 4, that's the fraction outside of the constant. Now, minus minus gives you plus. Let's collect the, the coefficients. 3 and divided by 4, integral of cosine 4x dx. Yay, I know how to integrate cosine 4x dx. It's your substitution. So minus 3 quarters x cosine 4x. I'm just gently collecting all the terms plus three quarters, and I will do your substitution shortcut. Integral of cosine is plus or minus sine. Let me color code it in different color. Integral of cosine is plus or minus sine. Copy the part inside, divided by the leading coefficient. 
plus C outside. And then you check yourself. Derivative of sine is plus cosine. So you don't have to change anything. This is the final answer. What do you think about that? That's integration by parts and use substitution in one example. Can you do that on the test tonight at midnight? It starts at midnight and I gave you extra 24 hours. So it's due Wednesday night now. Not too bad, too good quiet. It's either a good sign or a bad sign. Note, if you form integral integration by parts with a definite integral, and you don't have to write this down, but just letting you know, it's, if it is from A to B, you do not change limits of integration. Integration by parts is just calling names, pieces of integral, parts of integral. So A and B stay the same. The difference will be a bar A and B for the first part, UV, and then an integral from A to B for the second part, integral V to U. So you integrate, integrate, at the end you plug everywhere, B minus A, right? So that's the same thing, basically, as always with you. So that's a beautiful part. That's why integration by parts, technically speaking, is easier than USAP because uh, kind of less technical details not to forget to do. Yeah, that's my point. So I can, I guess I can leave that. So A and B. A and B, A and B everywhere, like so. And then you, instead of plus C, obviously you keep going calculating that. That's uh, what you do if you perform integration by parts for the definite integral. Usually there's a 24 hours uh, for the test. Check the syllabus while I'm, while I'm saying that, if I'm wrong. But usually the coordinator of online classes tells us it's 24 hours. And then I extended it to be 48 hours. But yeah, check it. Let me know if that's not correct. Maybe she changed something this semester. Yeah, I'm trying to follow the syllabus because that's kind of the whole point of coordinated courses. We're required to follow what the syllabus were given in the canvas show in the exam. <laughs> so that's good. Ah, oh, that's just two chapters. Let's move on. Let's be optimistic. Uh, how do you work with trigonometric uh, integrals with tricks? Such an annoying chapter. I always don't like teaching it and students don't like learning it. So annoying. Integration with tricks and integration using tricks. It's like the worst chapter ever. I think it's 6.2 or 6.3, oh, it's so annoying. So let's do that. Mm, I don't know, it's just, oh, I see. Okay, there's a comment about the test. Well then, it's nice. 30, so I extended it to be 48 hours. I wonder why it's changed to 30 hours. What's the difference between 30 and 24 hours? So it's like till five in the morning or something? Yeah, I feel like 24 hours is a good extension. It's exactly two days, so right? Let me know what you think about that. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to extend by 24, uh, well, basically to have 48 hours total. So that's like very clear deadline. Now, the uh, integration with tricks, let me show you how to do this sine times cosine stuff. Uh, like this one. Integration with tricks, integrals. So one chapter has two parts, integrals with tricks. That's the one that has trigonometric functions and then integrals using tricks. That's the one that they did not have integrals. And then we plug sine, secant or tangent. So that's the first one, integral with tricks. Example, what to do if you have sine cube x, cosine square x dx. How do you integrate that? This is the common strategy uh, to memorize. That's unfortunately, you just have to memorize the idea, understand it, and then if you remember it, it's better like this. So 
you know that derivative of sine gives you cosine, derivative of cosine gives you sine with a negative though. Then you know that one will be u and the other one will be dv. Where is the example? I'm looking for the example. Okay, whatever. I'll just do it by myself. So the idea is if you see odd, odd powers, this is when you start working. We don't like odd powers when it comes to sine and secant, tangent and cosine. We like even up powers, even, not evil. So I'm going to write it down as, well, I can write it down underneath, right? Like this. This is sine squared x times sine x. So the one that is standing with the one power, just one. So if it's uh, if it was originally sine to the seven, then I will do sine to the six times sine. This is what I call tail. That's not the official way to teach it, but I like it. It's a tail. Move the tail to the end of the integral. That's also not a rule, but it's very helpful to teach it this way. I'll keep it in pink. Sine square x times in black, cosine square x times in blue, the tail sine x dx this is what i did so you see what i do i did sine squared and sine gives you sine cube now this in blue tells you what is going to be du plus or minus that is my idea we're performing a substitution here and the tail gives away du so we've used to do u first and then from u we find du this whole chapter well at least integrals with tricks reverses the order it tells you what du is plus or minus and then from there you know what u is going to be so if du is sine, then what is u? Can you tell me? U is cosine. And then of course you will change the sine. That doesn't matter that much. So you change the sine to make it perfect. But now I know that u will be this, this guy will be u. If cosine is u, du will be minus sine x dx, which is part in blue. Okay, then what to do with the first thing, this guy? Well, sine squared is one minus cosine squared. One minus cosine squared. So now everything will be in terms of cosine, except the tail red color. One minus cosine squared, that's inside of the integral. Cosine squared is black. And the tail is sine x dx, like so. Why this is amazing? Because now I'll write down u is cosine, u is cosine. Let u be cosine x, I forgot x. Then du is minus sine x dx. We need sine x dx. So let's solve for that. Just basically change the sign. Sine x dx will be minus du. This is my u substitution box. Plug everything in and you will have one minus u squared. U squared du with a minus in front. That's how I usually do. I put minus in front. And now you integrate that. Before I continue, let me check the chat. Okay. Continue. Integral of distribute u squared and finish integration. Integral of minus u squared is u cube u cube over three. And I don't want to write down every time u and then rewrite it to cosine. So just do it right away. Cosine is your u. So it's cosine cube over three. That saves a lot of time. Minus minus gives you plus. u to the four gives u to the five over five. So it's going to be cosine to the five over five plus c. Does this make sense? This is the answer. Can you do that? This is the answer. So I went back right away. Let me write it down. U is cosine x. 
saves lots of time in writing also. So that's the example. Say with secant and tangent, uh, the only difference is, well, there are two differences. Formulas, remember different formulas. Sine square x plus cosine square x gives you one. So each function square is one or minus another function square. That's how you can remember. Sine square is one minus cosine square and so on. But then secant squared minus co uh, tangent squared is one. I remember the secant is uh, cooler than tangent, so secant goes first. And this idea that secant being cooler actually supports by many other formulas. It's like kind of more, more strong. It's, anyway, it's too cool to be second. So it's the first, secant goes first. Then from here, you also can solve for secant tangent. And then of course, you need to remember derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine minus sine. And then the most important is new stuff for secant tangent. If you don't remember from calculus one, then here you go. Derivative of secant, secant x prime. Secant is so cool that it likes itself, so it copies itself first, and then it puts tangent at the end, right? And then tangent is not that cool, but it likes secant a lot, so it's secant squared, like that. So using these formulas, you integrate products of secants to the power and tangent to the power. That is the idea. Move on to this guy, uh, this chapter. What to do, what to plug. Uh, when you have options to plug sine, uh, tangent, and secant. That is the chapter called integrals using tricks. Integrals using tricks. So with tricks, we already did, but now what if there's no tricks and you need to use tricks? This is such an annoying chapter. I have to tell you, we don't teach that in other countries. Like everyone who comes to United States as a student are shocked when they see this chapter. And as an instructor, I was shocked too. Like, why do we, why do we torture people so much? This is a whole, such a time consuming homework. Do you remember? Just like, like who, who cares? I mean, it's a nice playing with formulas thing, but oh my goodness, the right triangle thing. I'm not gonna even do it right now. It's just too time consuming. So I made sure there is no right triangle in the exam. It's just too time consuming, even though you guys have uh, 24, uh, two hours, almost at 24 hours to take the test. To take the test, yes, but the test is two hours long. There is a time limit. Can you imagine doing the right triangle and you mess up just at the very end? So I had to take points off because you don't remember right triangle. This is calculus too. I don't care about that. I care that you don't know how to integrate things. So there's no right triangles there, but there are questions about substitution. How to substitute and definite integrals don't need right triangle also. Definite integrals, you just plug the stuff. So this is classical example and this is classical example, right? So do you know how to substitute stuff? And, and you can watch more videos. Uh, I have lots of videos on these chapters because students are stuck in the homeworks. So I will ask you, uh, what is the right, uh, substitute, correct substitution, right? And that kind of stuff. Here's the options. If it's multiple choice, you can actually see it in the practice exam. I have practice exam in modules. Um, you see, there's no tricks. What we want to do, we want to plug the tricks. Plug the trick, seriously. Uh, we want to plug in the trigonometric function. Like it's going to make it easier, but somehow, yes, it does actually work out well. So we want to put instead of x, some kind of function. And we taught you three cool choices. Uh, and there's a nice table on that. Either x is some number a, right? And then there's a sign u. Let me see, theta, u or theta. So sometimes we teach us with u, sometimes with theta. Let me put theta. 
theta is this O with the legally part inside called theta. U is fine. Uh, or it's A secant theta, or it's A tangent theta. This is the three things we taught you. You can plug and they work out somehow. So like lots, of, lots of trigonometry happens and then the right triangle and they work. So if you watch my videos, you see how nice it all simplifies and as you videos. So which one to plug? This is how I had memorized it. Tangent is the easy one. So let me tell you this. Uh, X squared plus 25 squared. I see it and I can say it. What is that if I spell it on, uh, out, out loud? I will say it input squared minus number or constant squared. That's how you can say it, right? Input is X. So input squared minus number squared. So this is how I see it. Tangent is the only one that has plus, right? If there's a plus, you immediately know, oh, actually this one has a plus. I made a typo or it got deleted when I was changing something. This one is the plus. The moment you see plus, you should not even question this. This is the only one that has plus, that's tangent. Secant and sine are the one that's complicated. Uh, so input squared number squared. That's the only one with plus. Then the minus one is for sine and secant. One has input squared minus number squared, and the other one is number squared minus input squared. Which one is which? So for example, two, are you using, do you remember, do you use secant or you use sine for the square root of nine minus x squared? Tell me, do you remember that? Which one are you using? Sign, exactly, good job. So sign has a number goes first. Nine is first, that's how you do. Number, number squared minus input squared. And then secant is the other way around. So this is how I remember that too. Since nine goes first, X will be, and I will uh, skip something, sine of theta since so what are the options it's uh, the options are five secant theta five tangent theta five uh sine theta one fifth tangent theta blah 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 so like all those kind of questions remember in order for 25 to be factored out five should be standing in front of the function because then five will be square. It'll be 25 input squared plus 25. 25 gets factored out instead of the square root and it's very convenient, blah, blah, blah. That's why it's not one over five for sure. If you see a fraction, that's not correct. They're trying to fool you. So just this mean, um, we, well, yeah, at least as a choice, that's not correct. And then, it's tangent for the first case because it's plus tangent. For the second one, it's sine, and it's going to be nine or no. What do you think? Remember, someone is writing down. It should be square root of the number, so it's three. So be careful with those little things, unfortunately. Good job. So this is what we need. And then, then what happens when you actually plug it in? Let me do the first one. This is a table. So the first one I'm plugging in and it's gonna be, uh, so let me see. What is the resulting integral? Sometimes they ask that. One over, so, oh, this is how they do it. Integral one over x squared, the square root, x squared plus 25 dx, like so. Now, u, so that's not u, x, we already agreed will be five tangent theta. Then dx is, that's when you need to remember derivatives, five tangent likes secant so much that it gives secant squared theta, d theta, like so. 
now we know that whatever you see x, you plug tangent, whatever you see dx, that's gonna be five second uh, squared. That's gonna be the numerator is one dx. One dx, that's gonna be this piece, five second squared theta d theta. That's, the, that's numerator. X squared is now five tangent theta squared squared, or you can write down each squared, right? I like writing down each squared because it speeds up the calculations. Square root, again, five tangent theta squared plus 25. Why did we use five in front? Because now we're gonna factor out that five. So it's gonna be integral right away. Take out the constants that you know how to take out. I see this five and I see this five squared. So remember each can be just squared separately, right? Like so. So I will have five over five squared, five over five squared. Don't simplify it yet, simplify it at the very end. Integral secant squared theta d theta over tangent theta squared. Don't forget it's squared. Let me put fat squared. Square root, factor out five squared. So it's gonna be 25 factored out tangent squared theta plus one. That's what's happening here. Finally, this is the constant to kick out. Square root of 25 is five. And you're kicking it out outside of the integral. Five over five squared, we're already there. And now there's 25 in blue, inside of the square root becomes one over five, right? So five in denominator. Oh. Finally, let's see. Uh, all of this simplifies nicely. Let me check something. Yeah. How does it simplify? Only because you know the formulas. Wow, this is so interesting, right? Like so exciting to work results. Like seriously, this is the most boring chapter in the whole calculus two class. So just try to move, uh, just to survive and then you will never do it again. <laughs> I try to avoid putting one of the final exam if I can. So one plus tangent squared, I don't remember. So let's go back. I remember the original formula, this one. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Because if you move things around, you can see that. Okay, so that's the whole point. This is secant squared. Secant squared, but it's inside of the square root. So it's gonna be secant squared theta, tangent squared theta times secant, secant, so square root and squared work each other out. Finally, d theta, what is going on? Oh yeah, I wanted to show that. d theta, finally, that simplifies five over five or squared times five, one over 25, integral, secant, not squared anymore, cancel out over tangent squared d theta. And after this, you can also simplify it knowing the definitions of secant and tangent. One over 25. Definitions are, for you to know, not all countries have secant and cosecant. Uh, we did not have it in Ukraine. And some other countries don't have it either. Secant theta and cosecant theta. My students told me this, how, this is how they remember it. Whatever starts with S will start with C. But I was with C starts with S. So secant is cosine, but one over. And then uh, cosecant is sine, but one over. Make sense? That's fine. I don't know. That's how they told me, and I really like it since then. So if you simplify these, one secant is a numerator, tangent squared denominator, you will have something beautiful and you move on after that. Then you build right triangle, blah, 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 and all of that kind of stuff. Amazing. Just very interesting, because you can see I'm very excited about this chapter. Good. Move on. Practice that. We only have a couple topics left, actually. Only two topics. Numerical integration and fractions. Partial fraction decomposition. And also, what? Average, average rate of change. Average is basically 
Uh, yeah, let me just write down the formula. If you see, if we get, we ask you to find the average, find the average value function, average value function, average value of the function, okay, of the function. Average value function is uh, integral, as always, from A to B, f of x dx, whatever we ask you, just integrate that. But then don't forget to divide by the length of the interval, one over b minus a. That's kind of it, nothing new to know here. Just don't forget to do that. Okay, someone is asking me to be there, to leave. It's fine, I still have enough time to cover a little bit more and then I have to go. Same Good. So, so that's uh, nothing new here. Just do that. That's good. Finally, uh, partial friction decompositions. That's the one that needs tables. Basically, uh, this one you practice by yourself. I do have lots of good videos. So I don't feel uh, bad not to show that. I have lots of good videos on partial friction decompositions. And the most important is table. You know, not this specific table, a lot of tables are good, but yeah, of course I'm, I'm reviewing, I'm recording this section, this video, so I will be posting everything. The most important is if you have uh, integral with stuff, no, let's do the, this way. This way maybe is easier to let me do two examples for this video. If you have x over linear times linear, it will be a over linear plus b over linear. And all of this is inside. Well, this is actually not necessary about the integrals. It's partial fraction decomposition. And then we integrate all of this. Now, if you have quadratic function in the denominator, then it's going to be a x plus b at the top. If you have linear square, so that's a difference. It's not quadratic in the sense that it is linear x plus five, for example, and then squared. Then you do this way. You do a over x plus five plus b over x plus five squared. And it's not necessarily squared. It's repeated linear. So let me show you. If it is to the four, then I'll have to continue. So it was a over x plus five, b over x plus five squared, c over x plus five cubed, d over x plus five to the four, like so, until I get into the power I need. If it is squared, repeated, then you do the same thing, but with a linear on the top, ax plus b over x squared plus six, c plus dx, not ax plus b, but yeah, a plus bx, c plus dx plus squared. And you continue adding more and more until you get to whatever you need. So this is how it looks in a beautiful way. ax plus b, ax plus b, ax plus b, until you accumulate to the power you need. This is, this is the table I like the most. So, you know, just uh, need to practice a lot. These questions, uh, how you solve them and everything, Mostly they come from practice. Uh, there's nothing there to explain more than actually to work on it. So I just tell you to watch the video I have. I have many nice videos on this. I have all the cases actually. I made videos on each, the, each case, number one, two, and three, and four. And I explained how to solve faster for the exponents. For you to know, I do have a video on my YouTube channel where we teach you how to find A, B, C, and D, all those coefficients using um, calculator. So actually, actually, those are my notes, right? I have all of this, all of this is recorded. All of these examples are in the video. You see how we're solving for A, B, and C, plugging into the integral, integrating, blah, blah, blah. Actually, you can use calculator to do all this work for you. Calculator can do it in five seconds if you want to learn how to do it. The question is, which one do you prefer? To learn how to learn to do it and type it in, or to actually just count by yourself. So sometimes counting by yourself is faster. But there is a video I posted on YouTube explaining how to do it faster.
So plugging convenient numbers is my favorite way to do it. I'm explaining that in the video as well. That's uh, partial fraction decompositions. I have lots of cool examples uh, in my videos and everything. But as you can see, this is kind of the most important. If you have linear squared, that's x squared, then it's going to be a over x plus b over x squared because it's linear repeated twice. If you have linear not repeated, I will have c over linear x plus 1. But if I have, if I have x squared plus 9, it's quadratic. So I will have dx plus e or basically ax plus b shape over the quadratic. So your job is to memorize which one goes where. That's actually proven by a theorem for you to know. That's a theorem. And then uh, check the videos how to solve for this. That will take lots of time. So that will be like a whole new video. How about numerical integration? Uh, learn two ways using the graph and a fun three ways. Oh, this is my favorite joke, right? We have trapezoid rule, midpoint rule, and Simpson's rule. Trapezoid rule, we're using trapezoids to approximate uh, the area under the graph, right? Here they are, trapezoids, like so. Midpoint rule, left point rule, right point rule. We use rectangles that touch the graph of the function with midpoint, left point, right point. And Simpson's rule doesn't use Simpson's. It, uh, it's a name of the creator of the rule. It used parabolas. Parabola number one, parabola number two. So it's also called quadratic approximation because of that. It's just a joke over here. So on a test, I will not ask you to calculate errors. Nobody can do it fast and without getting angry. So putting this on a test is just super mean. I never put a error calculation on a test. So it's just homework kind of thing. And if you're computer science and engineering, you'll be doing it for your major anyways. But Mm. You need to know the formulas for sure. This is how the formulas, how the I memorize it. Midpoint rule just accumulates Fs and multiplies by dx. dx is b minus a over n, the length of the interval times number of points we're using n. So it says using five points and you divide by five. Uh, trapezoidal rule, or sometimes called trapezoid rule, depends on the book, like so. Takes dx and divides by two, and Simpson's rule, uh, not dx, delta x. Delta x divided by three. So that's the difference. Uh, not the only difference, but the first difference, at least, is that. And dx divided by one, dx, delta x divided by two, delta x divided by three. That's the difference. And then the formula after that is also different. While uh, midpoint rule just collects all the guys uh, like so and inputs are middle points that's why in this formula it's called mi it's middle point trapezoid and simpson's rule they have a pattern one two 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 one for trapezoid rule this is how i remember this idea uh ones in the uh twos in the middle because each sides side of each trapezoid is used twice for one it's a side for the left trapezoid and the side for the right trapezoid the next line it's a side for the left trapezoid and the side for the right trapezoid this is how i remember it and actually partially that is the case the proof comes from this idea and not specifically that but it's kind of good intuitive idea except the last ones the last side is not used anywhere else and the first side is not used anywhere else so it's one two 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 one that's how I memorize it. And the other one, the Simpsons rule, has a weird pattern. One, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. Two, four. And the most important then four and one should be at the very end. So it should start with one, four and end with four, one. In the middle, you have two, four, two, four, two, four, two. Only works for n even. n has to be even. That is important. And so there are two ways to, uh, three ways to calculate them. Either just we give you a function and you calculate that. I have a video on that. This is how explaining carefully you create. I have actually videos on all three methods. So I highly recommend watching. Midpoint, trapezoid, Simpsons. Can you do all three on the test? 
should be able to do all three. So how do we show you, how do we give you a function? Three ways of giving you a function. A function is uh, an expression, right? Here it is. In integral is a given as an expression. It's given, it's over there. Uh, from zero to one. Way two, we give you a graph. So expression, or we give you a graph. A graph is like blah, blah, blah. And we tell you, well, I actually want the area from A to B. That's way two. You don't have an expression. You have a graph. And way three, a data list, list of data. That's basically Excel file. That's what data scientists are doing. They're working with lots of lots of tables. You have input. So X1, X2, X3, blah, blah, blah. And output, 17, 25, 37. You have to know how to work with all three. That's actually the most important part of this chapter is to learn how to work with functions and know some numerical methods to work with them. For you to know Simpson's rule is very popular. You will see it lots of in lots of books and lots of applications. Simpson's Euler's rule mm, are pretty popular. They're good. I, engineers like them. You might hear about them later. So. With the first example, you actually create the interval and plug, find the points, plug it in the function. But the second one, you have to actually draw it carefully. So trapezoid, uh, four rectangles, for example, you do like this and like this, right? And like you actually draw it, which is like super annoying. Or we draw it for you, and now you need to know what to do about it. And you plug those points, the points attached to the function. Uh, you use them. For the third one, that's the easiest one, actually. It's a table method. Here it is. I have a video on that. What if the function is giving us a data point, a list of data points? Then it's just the fastest one because we already gave you the outputs and we give you the inputs. So you just plug them in the formula. You just need to remember of one, two, one, one, two, 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 one for trapezoid. And then uh, the other one, one, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, four, one. That was very cool. I kind of enjoyed that. Isn't it all? I think that's all. Let me check quickly the test. Let me look through the exam, see if I missed something. U substitution, U substitution, integration by parts, integration by parts, U substitution again. Partial fraction decomposition, partial fraction decomposition, uh, solving using tricks, which is sign, secret, and tension. We did that. Solving with tricks, which is like sine to the power times cosine to the power. We did that. Partial fraction decomposition again. Oh, using tables. Well, I did not do that. Let me you do one more example, integral with tables. Then we did trapezoidal rule, midpoint rule, Simpson's rule. Nice. I just showed that. Integration by parts again. We did that. We did that. Numerical integrations again, which I just mentioned. Uh, we did that. I think I showed you everything. Look at that. Very good. So most of the lots, half of the exam is use substitution integration by parts. To be honest, we're not supposed to pass you in this class if you don't know integration by parts and use up. It's too popular. Every other math classes have them. So you cannot move on if you don't know that. The only thing I did not show is integration with tables. Every chapter you covered, we covered um, is there, is on a test, 16 problems, so it's all there. The last one, integration with tables. We give you an integral and we give you integral from a table and we ask you to figure out how to solve it, example, let me use it, uh, some example from the review. So for example, this crazy one. Yeah. If we give you integral 3x squared all over x to the 6 minus 16 dx, and then we ask you to use some kind of other given integral, which is integral from some table called table integrals. They're not special, just list of all kind of integrals. People just were bored at some point and they created lots of integrals. 
uh, someone actually defended the PhD with this project in the past. And now we are able to use it. Basically, they performed use substitution integration with parts for you. So now you can use this as a result, like so. So this is basically match. It's a game of mix and match, uh, if you know what I mean. Just like, what do you need to match here to make it look like whatever you need? I need to make the function here looks like the function in this integral. Well, the first obvious one is a. If it says u square minus a square, and you have actually the six minus 16, then dot a is four. That's like, this is the first thing you should write down. A is four, good, we, we did that. <laughs> that's, that's very nice. Then u, if it's x to the six, but you have to be squared, it's gonna be x cubed, right? Because x cubed squared is x to the six. That's nice. Then, uh, let's see if u, so it's not u equals, actually, yes, it is. From here, let's find the u. It's gonna be three x squared dx, right? But it's exactly the numerator of the uh, integral. So what are we going to have? If we plug all of this carefully, it's gonna be du because three x squared dx is du, c circled in yellow, divided by the square root x to the six, that is u squared, minus a squared. Did you succeed to match with the integral in the table? Yes, we succeeded. We know the answer for that integral. The answer for that integral is the right hand side, RHS, of the table integral equals right hand side. Now I just need to go back to the previous notation. Right hand side tells me that the answer is natural law absolute value of u, but u is x cubed. You just go back right away. You're using this table over here to go back. So it's x cubed plus a square root, u squared, but u is x cubed. So it's gonna be u squared, u cubed squared. That's x to the six basically. Minus a squared, that is 16 because a is four. Close absolute value plus c, boom, you're done. How about that? Can you do that? Can you do that? That's uh, that's how it is. Sometimes some coefficient gonna pop out, sometimes not. But usually you start with A, that's the obvious one. Then you kind of match with U, check out the DU to be matched, and then you use the integral from the table and you get the answer. That's all, that's all we needed. What do you think about that? Because I kind of need to go. Good job, people, for coming. Um, if you have questions, so I will post this video in a couple hours because the video will take hours to get, be created. It takes exactly a couple hours to be created, and I'll be back by then, so it's perfect. And then I will post the notes for you. I think you would like the PDF file, right? So I'll post the notes for you. And then you have questions. You post them in the forum, and that's perfect because me, I'm checking the forum, and Nick checks the forum. And now it's 6.30. You can now go join Nick. He will help you to finish your homework by tonight. And also there is a review, chapter review, and there's a practice, uh, practice test. I need to figure out it after I come back. That is for, so chapter review is for extra credit and um, practice test will be also for extra credit. Wow, that was amazing. I'm glad uh, you, you felt it was good and have a good luck on the test. I really want you to do well. So make sure that you just pay attention to what you type in check everything and read my recent announcement explain you how to get two attempts on the test. Good job people, have a good night. Bye-bye.